This next model is the largest one that's probably ever been built here, and it's a classical model in that most physics departments have one like this, but uh, few of them have one this big. Uh, this is a double spherical pendulum, and it has four degrees of vibration, four degrees of freedom and four modes of vibration, and uh, I'll try to illustrate all of them. Uh, first, there will be one mode of vibration in which the two masses swing together like a chain, and we can pick the axis we want to, the plane we want it to vibrate in, and perpendicular to that, there would be another mode of vibration at exactly the same frequency. So we have two modes of vibration, but they're at the same frequency. Now I might add the reason they're at the same frequency is because the pivot points in the lateral direction is exactly the same, whereas in some of these models one pivot point is displaced down, which makes the two lower frequencies slightly different, giving rise to some very interesting motion. All right, so we have two low frequency modes and then there will be a pair of high frequency modes. Again, now these could be any perpendicular, two perpendicular planes. They don't have to be in the same planes as the fundamentals. So this mode would look like this. Now the reason we built this model so large uh, using these large lead weights is we wanted to have a lot of energy in it so that it would run a long time and hopefully uh, we we'll get it to, to write on a piece of paper. <coughs> the other mode would be perpendicular to that and in effect we can choose any axis we want. Like here's one this way and then there's another one perpendicular to that. So uh, now then, if we excite all four of these frequencies at the same time, then this will give rise to some very complex and strange motions. Uh, one could simulate this on a computer easily. Uh, it's a Lissajou pattern that has four modes of vibration. The Lissajou pattern of, of uh, two oscillators on an oscilloscope would uh, form a perfect circle if they were in 90 degrees out of phase. This one has many variations of that. Now, uh, if we insert a pin in the pin holder, then we should be able to get some idea of the graphical output of the device. And that's what we'll try to do next. going to put a piece of blank paper under it. Uh, I've got a glitch. Okay, and then I'm going to put a pin in the pin holder and then we will give it some excitation and it's tracing out the motion of the bottom mass. There is a small version of this in the physical science building lobby last time I looked and it draws in sand but it's a very similar uh, type of uh, device. Okay, can you focus on that? By giving this an arbitrary start, you could go all day and not repeat the same Lissajou pattern twice. <laughs> 